Called meeting to order at 2.09. Slide two.
USA website. Kansas per diem is $46 a day. San Diego is $71 by their standards. That's fine. In regards to that pollution insurance, I did visit with, we do have a cancellation form here if we decide to go that route. I did stop by and visit with Steve a little bit. He says it is a little more than what we entail. And he's available Wednesday to come down, Wednesday afternoon to come down and explain to us. We probably need to be talking to KCAP to find out what they're, I don't think, in visiting with him, he didn't think anything to do with pollution would be covered under general liability. I think that's probably right. And this policy, $40,000 premium and $50,000 deductible. So it's just a pretty good chunk. And I don't see that it covers the things that Mr. Kaplan had indicated. So it might be a good idea to have him come up. Because he was talking about chemical spills. On-site cleanup is explicitly excluded. I think it's explicitly excluded. Those are the coverage he was touting. And that would be the really expensive part. Yeah, he was talking about it covers both the covered site, which he's talking about the lab. That he can't right now. That's covered. But then the open sea deep bed at the transfer station. Although we don't get much stuff for that. There's not really that much. Covers it for what? The policy covers the pollution potential for that. Okay. 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 And then it covers like oil and gas spills from road bricks that they've got. I mean, they've got the KDHE standard containment there. If something was spilled. I mean, there. Can we find out for a reason what KCAMP actually covers? I know there's no use duplicating it or either we need it or we don't. I do have a copy of their policy. He emailed to me. Pauline has one if you want to look at it. But you're right. Pollution is excluded. And if somebody's walking out of the transfer station and falls in the CMD pit, that's covered under premises liability. But the pollution is not. Well, I visited with the hands way back and he said, yeah, a big site where they handle a lot. He said they have pollution insurance. He didn't know, though, that we would need it when we were transferring all that stuff. You know. Yeah, I think that was the question. So we're talking about our... Pollution insurance? Yeah. See, it covers if you have a fuel spill. I know you said, I think we visited briefly about that. You've got the KDHE containment. I got an email from Jeff that said that there's a clause in there that says it's not covered for fuel spills. On which policy? On the pollution control? Well, it doesn't cover the... It doesn't cover on-site cleanup. So that is excluded. If the third party would be damaged by it, that would be covered. I talked to Steve on my way in. He's a veteran. I thought maybe we'd have him come in and explain. You know, we're actually past due. I mean, we technically won't. But if we do sign up again, they're going to come out and make a check and make sure that everything's up to snuff and stuff. So I think in the meantime, we'll probably have to check around with some other counties and stuff. I know Richard said he... Richard Mullen went to their conference with us in Jefferson County. He was on the way. Of course, they don't even run their own landfills. But he was aware that they had anything like that. All of our fuel tanks are either double-walled or they have the containment around the bottom. A lot of those things still can't happen. Sure. Yeah, what would happen if you had some kind of a spill out when you're doing a road or something? Well, if... You know, our disturbers will fit 
1500 gallon um, find a lot of dirt and rock to <laughs> cover it up and scoop it up and you know, haul it off but uh, I would say if a, a tanker got a leak that would be on Vance Brothers but uh, well it's kind of like to me if you did stop to be one of those gray areas This seems like a lot of money, particularly if you look at fifty thousand dollars. The bucket cap? Yeah. yeah. Really, that's a that three years, so what that figure fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars, somewhere that fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah, sixteen thirty thirty three. Huh? Sixteen three thirty three. Well, that's fifty thousand but the policy's only forty two or oh. forty three.
until the county takes over or they request us to work on it, the township and pay us for it, my hands are tied. You have to come up with things that we have to deal with paying you otherwise. We'll go ahead. I, I've got more stuff. To yeah, I don't have anything particular timing wise. I just asked her when was free, so okay. it's fine. Okay. You can finish with him. Okay. You're fine. Just go ahead. Okay, this is all solid waste stuff. Um, this seems a little high to me, but uh, I got an invoice here from. Chaplain Tire Recycles about the city cleanup. It was five thousand four hundred and fifty four dollars. Uh, the drain. 
drain pipe plugged up that, uh, that goes to our holding tank. Uh, it over the years it, it was all completely full sediment, and we haven't we haven't cleaned that drain since the place was new. This was the first time, and that's what it cost. The Casting came out and they tried to clean it out, but it was they had to get one of those big vacuum trucks to suck it out. So hopefully that's something we won't have to do for. Like I said it hasn't been done since '93 when it opened. This is the first time.
record that actually yeah. probably ought to be a little wider and a little better face. I was shocked that they took that down. They kind of like the slant and redid it. Come right back out and took it down. They can on, this is Chip and Steel Road, um, on an asphalt road they can. I, I don't know. Oh, it's it's a real thing. Yeah. Uh, he has no I'm just thinking that someday we're going to have to pay the whole set of our
because I told yes, I told them um, the coffin trailer. I want I told them I want to see it work, see how smooth the hooks up and unhooks. Um, because I did talk to a contractor, said that was one of the big things on them is uh, how easily they hooked up. Because some of them have a they have a guide built into them. They just have to be close and it guides you in, and some of them don't have that. So he said, make sure it's got that guy. It's got like a B in it. So. Pauline asked if he could go before me. Is he second here? Yeah, he's right there. Yeah. Oh, right there. He's behind the Yeah. Yes. Come on. Uh, this is Larry Becker of Beckerview Farms, is it? Well, uh, he is putting in a uh, natural gas line, hooking it onto an existing natural gas line, leads an easement over a township road. I've done some research on it, it's actually more complicated than it seems like it should be. Uh, this road actually is the dividing line between two townships. Crossing the road, so we have to get approval from both of the townships. And then also, uh, you all are the actual owners of the road, even though it's maintained by the township. So you have to have permission from the townships in order to do any digging and have that easement from you. Uh, I have prepared an easement. He has taken it to get approved by uh, townships, including uh, uh, including Mr. Dorsen. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no. Oral, the uh, end of the easement. Uh, I prepared it, so I, I'm happy that it satisfies what part of What does it say about crossing our um, blacktop road? Is that going to be board or this? It has to be board if it's a blacktop road. Right. This is a dirt road. Yeah. Oh, okay. In this area, it's a dirt road. So. Yeah. Oh, I thought it, it was. It did say that it, if it's a blacktop, it needs to be board. You're right. So I, we just need to prove it is an easement. It is an uh, is it easement? It is an actual Is there a number in it for it? No. It, it will be recorded to the city's office after it's approved. Okay. I didn't take a moment. I have a motion to approve the easement. Is there, is there a road or is, do we need to reference the road? Well, it's the West Road right of way of Elk Road and the South Half of Section 4 Township 5 South Greenway. And then also the East Road right away in the same. That sounds good. <laughs> I'd second it. Any discussion? I all in favor of approving the easement say aye. Aye. On the same side. Motion mm -hmm. carries. It is set up for Mr. Schumann's signature. Mm -hmm. He's the best chairman. He's not here. Okay. He's supposed to be here at 3 o'clock. He's either going to be here at 3 o'clock or he's not going to be here at 12 o'clock. If I could sign it, then I can. Is somebody in the clerk's office in there? Just, just you or the only one today? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one, curious. Oh, you are? Good sign. I can sign it. I can tell him to put my seat on it.
cancel the page and you want to make sure your hats don't fall around and check a little more with uh, neighboring counties as to whether they use any kind of pollution. The only place I found uh, solid waste match our hands solid waste where they tore the trash from what he said. Sixteen, seventeen different counties. They do carry pollution insurance, but they are in collecting units for all trash. Okay. He didn't know that we needed pollution insurance on the way. Well, Kathleen yeah, said this was supposed to cover fuel spills, chemical spills, but it's not just leaves. One of the concerns I had about were the high deductibles yes. and the uh, the premiums. You're spending about hundred thousand dollars before you're seeing anything if it's by cleanup. Yeah, hundred percent. I just thought we do it. What Kevin here explained about you know, we check the cake in, but we don't think it. You know, that's not kind of there. So uh, I mean, this just kind of general liability. So I don't think it's going to be anything. There, so we have to weigh out whether there's any justification for that or not. So, uh, let's see, Matt was in also, and he he's going tomorrow to look at the new trailer, the other trailer that Bob Tain, what's the name of it? The call. The call. He's going to go look at the new one. That's the call. The new one. Mm -hmm. That's 39000 Those people now want 42 for that ball cane. And he's going to work with that. The total is going to take you now. Plus two to the point. Yeah. So he's 44 total. Was he taken out of his uh, general operating? Or he yes. That's the way I told him. I told him I said that's the only point he's got left. So he has 77000 savings on the oil. I said he's just going to have to watch your budget because that will run you because we already took 20 out of his operations. Mm -hmm. so, so. Then if we have to do quarter million down on the dollar drink, is 8000 I can write down the name of the company. Um, Kara 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 Right now. 
did the, the corrections want? They come up and ask for something. Three chairs. Oh, yeah, three and five or something. That's right. uh, brand new sheriff's car from SUV Corps. Get a picture. <laughs> it's a mark on my camera. I thought they, I thought they were here. Did they already get one? They already had that one. They had one. Got a new second. So that was just, that yeah. should be up to date on that. Because the truck is, the truck has been already. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know if you know what part of that first call. I got sapped off that tree on the old small. Really? That's my part. Well, you will see it. When you go out there, buddy. Did you know it was open? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She said propane and meltdown. Oh, and they don't have to rock the fill in a hole in the the Boy Scouts.
it's amazing how many people we have contact us and say, well, can we find out which properties are on the tax sale and where they're located? And so this would make it much easier to let people know which ones are on and where they're located and how they can go about. Um, and I'll get you a copy of these also. Uh, but what we're letting you know is in very, very little time, I mean, uh, our, we don't all use the same numbering system, but in about an hour's time, we were able to map out all these properties and produce uh, a couple little maps that make it really easy to find. If you look at the map itself, the numbers that you see on the map are the quick reference numbers from our camera. Those quick reference numbers do happen because I've pulled all the records together. They now happen to show on this list. So if you look at the uh, fourth column from the left, it says quick reference. And so if you find the number on the map, you can go to that column, find the number. Those are uh, sorted numerically, or it looks like they may not be absolutely numerically, but uh, that's something that wouldn't be too tough for us to get done. And currently, there are 48 properties on this list. As they pay down, what's going to happen is Pat's going to end up this makes it easier for Pat to deal with too because then he can scratch them from a list and know that we're getting them off of there without having to do uh, too much hunting or searching for them. And in the end, when it comes down to the final days, all we have to do is click on those files, delete them, and print new map, and it'll show exactly what is available. And anyone could have a copy of it. Just thought, you know, again, I don't come up here with quite as many fancy maps, but. On the other hand, it is good analysis and it does make it very easy for you to see what's there. And more and more, if I can, in dealing with CAD, in dealing with uh, you know emergency preparedness, and dealing with uh, roads and bridges, okay, and okay. with all these departments, uh, and with Chase back here doing today, we're going to have a database for him okay. for uh, analyzing refugee yeah. stuff. Okay. Uh, the better we can analyze the data, make it easy for them to understand. It, it didn't, you know, the GIS isn't all about great maps. It's about uh, quickly analyzing the data because it makes it easier to see what's going on. Uh, there are two of these properties that are in the scope that aren't sure on here. There's probably three properties overall. One that may be my place. You know, you think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. You know what? If it were on here, it would be an absolute mistake for you to have left it on here, and and this would be, you know, there are we there are properties that everyone wants to get forgotten about, and the way the lists are presented, it's difficult to know whose property belongs or what property belongs to specific individuals. If you know somebody who's in there, and you say, well, I think they just forgot, you know. Certainly, want a lot of them, but some of these are properties. Uh, as Pat can probably tell you, some of them are tied up in uh, messy uh, deed problems. That sometimes the easiest way is to let them go through the sheriff's sale, and then someone can get a clean deed to it. I came up here to kind of put in a little bit of a background on some of this that happened. When I came up here, the tax sales. People didn't seem to know about it. And the legal description was the paper. A lot of people don't know what they're at. And we have, we would have, we'd be lucky to have somebody bid enough on a house to pay the delinquent taxes. So a few years ago, this is before actually before any of you were up there. I've been here that long. Ago. I created what I do is I create a, the property record card along with the photograph and the maps. And then we make it known to the public if they want to know where these properties are located, what the houses look like, how much land, and what's, what's the improvement. We always had that out for the public to be able to look at. This is kind of like what I'm talking about. This is a notebook with a property record card in it, along with the map. And you'd be surprised if that. Once we, we did that with the help of the newspaper, letting people know that it come up to the appraisal office and actually find information about those houses. We actually, that next cell, we had the whole courtyard, or the ground out in front of the courthouse.
Um, actually, the street number, street, and street name, those are all the taxpayers. Uh, those are the individuals. And again, I, when I work with these, they're probably on this list are uh, 20 columns of information. Uh, and actually, those three that you see on the right hand side, those all deal with the individual's address who is delinquent. So, if you'll notice, uh, uh, there's one address that, that shows up on there repeatedly. The same person owns all those properties. That's just the mailing address of the taxpayer. That's the mailing address of the taxpayer. <laughs> Nobody oh, had the names on here too? Uh, I didn't put the names on there right now. Uh, I'd be happy to get you any of that information you want. I think it's based on my own text. Uh, and you know what? Uh, this book is really handy. We have people already stopping by and makes it easy for them to sit and look through them and not have to ask us all the questions about the property by doing that. The other thing is that if we're down to, and those are the same 48 properties that are on this list that are in that book, and if we get down to a week or two before, it just wouldn't be that difficult to scan these into a PDF file and make it available on the website so that anybody who wants could just go to the county's website and enjoy this to their heart's content <laughs> late at night or early morning over a cup of coffee. You may start a TV show. Why all the <laughs> well, there are a couple of those kinds of programs on Discovery Channel. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, the treasurer's office told me, I, I believe it's down to 34 properties or so left on there. Uh, so we'll, we'll get those updated. June 13th is our next big day. So that's our, uh, our, our cutoff day for, uh, for answers. So we'll. So we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a tax bill, tax bill they actually set up? No, June 13th, we'll set it. Well, I have to scoop it down. June 13th is the last day for filing the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's the third set. So I'll probably on the 14th, we'll get a date set, or possibly on the 17th. Yep. I thought you might all enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I just haven't been up here for quite a while. So. Yeah, you know, I, I, Jim, I, I appreciate uh, the work that the Roger has done for us. Uh, you know, I, I gave him some info on the Walnut Township Fire Department. And, uh, really, uh, an eye illustrious man. Those who were the people that uh, are petitioning for inclusion within the fire district there, which is. Interesting. And so he had a similar map on the, uh, I don't know whether that one I shared with you or not about uh, uh, the, the properties affected by the timber. Oh, yeah. Slash other <laughs> property, uh, which, which I thought was, was quite interesting. No, and uh, Penny DVD will be here the first day. We're going to go through all of the parts uh, and that changes. They they issued any statement or memo or what's I told us gonna have to come this week or the twentieth on Monday next week and I can't have time to do it, so that's why the zone and it's gonna come up and help me work for them. So hopefully they'll bring the answer with them. Okay. But, but you think are they gonna send it out to every county or I would hope it'd be Well they're just gonna write now correct this guy. But if they you know, if they make it bad for them to do something most likely it won't be until for until next year. Oh, um, <coughs> uh, talking about a couple of legislators, I know they've been in touch with with David Harper and uh, Roger Ham, and there was, there was talk about they're wanting to kind of evaluate it over the next year to two years or something like that. I, I, that's all I, from a legislative perspective as far as what they what they heard from PVD uh, to kind of stuff.
study it, and then I thought it would issue a statement right now. I mean, and I, I, was, I was told it was going to be a statement for across the board, like. They're trying to come up with one. We, we have a rough draft that we can give out to the public at this point. I'll cover some of the topics, but not all of them. Uh, hopefully, they'll have something that run with them at first. If you want to stop in, they'll be here at 9 o'clock at first. Say if somebody wasted an 18th hour or a 13th hour, what do you say? And they buy their bus back. Are they, are they, can they do that or they can't? That's going to be your best resource. They, they can they definitely can. They, they can't buy it back. They have to get the pay the tax. I'm sorry. They can redeem it prior to the sale. They, they can pay the taxes on it, pay the court costs and the drafting costs prior to the sale. So it's the taxes plus all the expenses accrued. Right, is that the day before the sale date? The day before. But no, if you have any delinquent taxes, you may not get it at the, the sale. At the day of the sale, you can't just go up to a hearing for delinquent taxes. So what I, my question, I guess, was if you owe 5000 you're not able to go up there and, and give 2000 for your own house and get it back. No. Right. It's going to be paid for. No, but they can't even owe delinquent taxes, taxes on anything else either. family members, they can't either, can they? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know how, how we would really police that. If you owe taxes, you may not be able to. <laughs> so if you owe taxes on your house, you can't bid on. If you owe taxes on a vacant lot, you can't buy on the property for tax sale. Uh, I don't think it would be that hard to get around so they could form a corporation or an LLC to, to take property. And, uh, we have an affidavit that, that they sign that they're be able to bid. And, uh, I don't, I don't know how we would ever catch those things. I think they're one tax, so they're actually making, they checked the individuals that didn't have any like taxes before they were able to get a bidding number, I think. Right, yeah, we, we will do that, but if somebody were to form a limited liability company, oh, I was you know, we, we just really, really would try to way to do that. Okay, then the next question is usually, if I look at these pictures, a neighbor would buy it. Okay, after they buy this thing before I turn that up, they are Well, they'd be covered by, if they're located in the in a city, they'd be covered by the Massachusetts ordinance. And chances are that's why they buy it. Yes. Uh, I, can, I can tell you from first hand experience, having worked for the city in that line of work before, uh, I used to come to the tax sales and say, this is the status of these properties as of this time in the eyes of the city. And we would let them know that, that we had been maintaining them and that we would be coming after them right away. And so they would want to begin almost immediately and clean them up. So I can assure you, yes, if they buy a property and it's in bad shape, I cannot imagine the city is going to let that go. They're going to say, we've got a new owner, it's time to say, let's get it cleaned up now. How, how mean you want to be to that new individual. I, you, know, you want to work with everybody. You know, somebody just buys it, you want to give them a reasonable period of time uh, to make it presentable again. But they know they have a new owner and they know they don't want it to go. What you mean? So we need to keep the city informed <coughs> what's going to happen on that day. Well, and, and again, if we ever had, uh, there are probably go to the tax sale that have had unsafe structure hearings against them. If that ever occurs, we show up, you know, they, the city will most likely show up and uh, say what the status of the property is during the sale. Okay. Pat, you said 34 of our properties. Is that 34 in addition to this or 34? No, it's so 34 of those. Well, you know what? They told me they had removed a certain number and they gave me a list of those properties last Friday. Okay, I didn't. And I ran the numbers against these. There were actually 30, there were actually, uh, in that book, and it tells me there were 23 properties removed from the 71 that were already there. And, and so I just came up with 48 based on that. They told me what they had removed. 
that had been paid off okay. on Friday of last week, and none of those are what is in that book. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll go through in a lot more detail the, the first or second week of June before our hearing. It is interesting to find yourself in my life to see. It does make it easier to see where they are, doesn't it? Yeah, visually you can see where it is. I'd be curious to see, you know, we have data that would be like hard to retrieve from like other years where we had tax sales to see where they line up. Mm -hmm. There's three key trends of which neighborhoods are seeing more. Well, I mean, it helps out like in things like neighborhood organization, planning, stuff like that. Well, and the map does kind of show you the. Uh, the arrangement of where properties are located yeah. in proximity to the city. And these are both kind of the same scale, so you know you could effectively uh, overlay the two and they do want that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I think that book later if you want to see it out there. No, no problem. Thank you. You didn't have any farms on there. Any what? No. You didn't have any farms on there. No. No. <laughs> no, we have farm one year. Did you really? Yeah. But I found out the guy let it go to the tax sale because he had a life estate in it and could not sell it. So it went to the tax sale. So all the money over the taxes that was delinquent, he got. So he sold the farm. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised that happened, but mm -hmm. wow. Because we would be loading the tires ourselves. Right. 
there's been some there's been some discussion about tires being handled out at the transfer station, like loading it on. Yeah, you know, like there's like the companies that will put out receptacles and they'll stuff. Well, the problem with all of the is you need to be taking it for budget because it's probably going to be a lot more economical to have a trailer sitting there and have them hauled off rather than filling a kit to dispose of it. There's too much doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
is going to be looked like this is going to be what we're going to deal with, and that's what we have to make a decision as to whether we're going to stay with an assessment fee, a tipping fee to help supplement the short the short government. Because, and the other thing is, is I'm working on uh, the present, I'm making a presentation on explaining how this sales tax is, and how the formula is totally skewed towards this dollar. It is terrible. I had confirmation like that. I got confirmation from three administrators that they made that the sales tax formula under the general use is skewed towards municipalities. The people in the unincorporated area have very little contribution. Or they, they contribute, basically, their hands are tied. They contribute 100%. As of last 
month we have an entire year's worth of weight. So, um, from, the, from them specifically? From everyone who's been weighing since we last May. Now, I put it on a leather sheet, but it's still kind of tiny. So, those are all the weights that we measure individually. And what I did was, they have a projection that was what their solid waste B was based off of, and that was a May to end of August uh, span. So that's about four months or one third of a year. I also did a um, average from May to October. Now, uh, we had to have a budget in by the end of August, but we got it in like a week later, so we were able to incorporate that one more month. But whatever we budgeted it for, that's what we were going to go with. But we kept track of the numbers past that. And so I went to, um, from May to October, which would be the salt waste fee hadn't, hadn't been sent out and, and people hadn't started producing. So that was pretty much a unchanged rate. And so I also did another projection based on those numbers. And I really wish I had a bigger paper, but, um, We'll use Bush and Liza as an example to the top left hand corner. But they were projected based on the number that we had when we had to come up with a solid waste assessment of 319 tons. And then their pre solid waste fee average, which was about six six month average or half year average, was at 313 tons. So a little less, but not that much. But then what their actual was, was 237. Tons, which means we over projected by 26%. Now, what you can see is starting in December, i.e., the, the solid waste fee period, you can see sharp reductions. So, um, you can make a legitimate argument that had the solid waste fee not gone in place, those projections would have been a little bit uh, more spot on. But because Bush, uh, a number of other companies, decided to, to reduce, then their projections were going to be off. So I went through and applied a percentage of what we were off. Um, some we dramatically underappraised or underprojected, like um, Bungie, Orchlands, and um, those were the two that were double digit that we underprojected, and then some were within 10% plus or minus. So they were pretty accurate projections. Um, but we do have Benedictines and Bartlett's, Blishmise and Mar Hill and MGP. They are all over 20%. Um, we over projected by 20% or more. Why I bring Mar Hills up is because they were projected to do 63 tons and their actual was 33 tons, so we were off by quite a bit. Well, it wasn't that though because of the, uh, for some of that early analysis, they, they did a summer remodel and they had. Yeah. And technically that shouldn't have been counted, and also if you'll notice in modern well, sure. box, there's a, they don't use um, a roll off, they don't, basically we should have never used a weight assessment for Mauer Hill because they don't really meet that threshold. They don't use it enough for us to get an accurate uh, assumption or an accurate measurement. So, um, why are there zeros on some of those two? On the zeros, either they brought nothing or um, the transfer station wasn't able to distinguish uh, company from company. And that, that also has happened uh, a number of times with VCs, and there was one other company that had a couple of zeros. And, you know, until we go to a tipping fee kind of system, uh, our numbers are going to, it, it is going to be much more difficult to get a month to month actual because we don't. They already pay for the service, so we don't necessarily need to get weights so that we have accurate bills. But if we did do it a tipping fee, then we'd get the, uh, the transfer station numbers a little bit straight now off. But it's the big thing that Mara Hills, that 
that, that was the, the one red herring through this whole process that I was a little bit worried about because initially it looked like through May, June, July, August that they were that they were not as problematic. But then October to January you have nothing and then from January on you have nothing. So they didn't they 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 don't use a separate container consistently enough. They should have just been off of a volume assessment. So um, those are the numbers of the, the things that we or the companies that we've weighed. Uh, the next page I've broken down the a little bit more. Um, and like I said, their even their projections based on that pre solid waste were pretty high. But their actuals. Yeah. So you're you're saying that 47 percent is is what you basically what it comes down to maybe overestimate their fee, but they got their fee reduced in half. Didn't they? they did. Um, everybody else has did. But the two main arguments is that Marvel should not have been assessed based on weight. They should have been a volume assessment, and I I do agree with that. Because Given how many zeros, they don't consistently use those kind of dumpsters that make it easy for us to weigh. They should have just been on a cubic yard basis and be done with it. Uh, the, other, the other argument, and this is something that I also wanted to address, was on the next page, um, the school districts were assessed on a different uh, method, a slightly different method, it's still incorporating volumes, but um, there's the, the USD 409 and USD 377. Still came out significantly less than a Mar Hill. A Mar Hill has 150, 200 kids. So, so I can tell you. So somewhere in there, but they also have how many live up there. That's that's the hard. That's where I find it hard to believe there's zeros in some of these months because there's kids up there. It, I, what I think happens is that is either they'll have transfer station. They'll have a roll off, and that's what we. Based off, but they still have regular pickups with their like a four cubic yarder and a I think yeah. two two six cubic yarders and one four cubic yarder. Those get picked up regularly, and that's their regular trash. The what we have at the transfer station is kind of their irregular trash. So, like like I mentioned, they don't fit neatly into any category. They don't. I mean, they should have been volume assessment the whole way. We shouldn't even have been messing with them, but. They were on the list when I came in because they were doing some renovations or construction or something. So how is 409 and 377 calculated? Well, the we have what Martin gave us, which as you can see, and on the next page I have a copy of what they sent us. I mean, there's not much you can calculate with somebody that says that they pick up some time five times at some point during the school year and one time during the summer because when you total all that up, that's 134 cubic yards total out of the year and that's less than some businesses do in a week. And that's for an entire school district for an entire year. That was, I can't explain why it was so underrepresented, but I did search around and look for uh, a legitimate number that you can base a, a different kind of assessment, one that's more per capita based, how many students that you have, and was able to find one and come up with a defensible calculation. But um, in, in my hindsight, I probably should have just applied the same calculus to all the K through 12 schools, just because when you have one, one calculus, one, and, and it just so happened to be private versus public, which Definitely didn't help us. Um, yeah, the only thing, the only thing more you know, is, is, is I think you, know, you, you could use that formula, but there should be a there should be an adjustment also made for the number of dormitories. Well, the with this, it's uh, it's based off of a uh, multi-district Minnesota trash study for their schools. They did a rural, uh, suburban, and, uh, and urban, and they tried to get a 
number I mean, per capita, which ended up being um, half a pound per student per day is essentially what you can calculate for um, trash generation. But that is your public schools that have one or two mills a day and your pretty standard school hours. If you incorporate, if you try to use that for a residential, it gets thrown off because it's three square meals plus any kind of living waste that is generated. So there's no real clean way to do it other than because a volume assessment will be, I think, it's 37. Volume assessment would have put them at $4,600, which is a difference of uh, $2,300 from what they were assessed. Uh, it's really hard to justify the numbers when you have a school that has 120 some odd students, 150 some odd students paying more than an entire school district um, because whether it was intentional or not, somebody can make a legitimate argument that that's, um, that's discrimination not a word. Either discrimination or some kind of gross miscalculation. Well, I don't think we, uh, nobody intentionally well, no discriminated. I know it's come up in this, you know, um, Phil Bannell's brought up the Salt Waste Committee. And there's some of legitimate of what would be that digging into a duty, what is the right way to calculate this? Well, I mean, it, it just appears to me like when you look four nine three seven seven, there's a little bit difference, but it just you know until you reduce the fee, it was pretty close to you know a dollar per student. Mm -hmm. just a little mm -hmm. bit, and and then when the fee was reduced in half, and then you get that close to fifty cents. So I mean, when you're looking at that. You know, I don't have any problem with making that kind of adjustment for, you know, something like a private school. But on the other hand, for this dormitory there, I think that's just like how they get it. You need to take that in consideration because they're going to be trash. They're going to be trash generated by the, by living, and actually will probably be higher than normal school. Probably, other than the scale, but the type of school would factor in. What I'm saying is that dormitory would be, could become similar to what like a residence would be. So each, you know, I don't know whether there's two per room or what, how they're how they're set up, but you know, each room would have would be considered. And that argument does kind of lend itself to what we do with BC as well, because while it's the same kind of residential, they they're on different ends of scale in terms of, or they're on one's 1,700 students, the others. So, what well, that was brought up was going off of a per room basis and also being able to apply that to a multi family housing kind of situation where it's just per room, per bed, and, and, and doing your assessment that way. That presents some problems, but it. it what did you do with the other two? There's only other two other schools, right? Um, the county besides these? Trinity and Athens. What, how would they assess? They have a two cubic yard dumpster dumped twice a week. So they're based on volume. Mm -hmm. They're based on volume because it's... How did they come out for student? Uh, they did come out higher than the school districts. I don't remember because it, it was brought up the disproportional um, solid waste feed for, for students. Uh, the school district did come out to like a dollar. I think um, the Aces and Trinity came out four or five dollars a student, and then Benedictine came out to like seventeen dollars a student. But you know that's in that's that would be a lot truer than the Aces and Trinity. Well, the Benedictine one you can make an argument, but the Aces and the Trinity. Uh, schools, the, the schools, the not even districts, that is pretty disproportionate. And if we had had enough information based on our haulers to get in, in, in a volume assessment for school districts, then that's what we would have gone with. But if I had gone with the just the volume assessment that we were providing, it would have been 
a fifth of what was actually assessed, and then we would have had real problems because then it would have been like 15 cents. Yeah. And that you're not going to be able to. I would think ACES and Trinity should be close to 419377 because they have any, you know, they don't have any people in there. Like BC and Florida, where they have kids that live there, they don't create the trash. But if you say ACES is $4 versus $4.9, mm -hmm. they would be able to up with something that I'd say would be way out. Yeah, the, it should be the same across the board. Yeah, but what the, ideally, that's what I want to do. It's just that, that you can't make up numbers. Yeah. Well, without having them be defensible. I mean, you have to, you're not just picking numbers out of the air. You have to be basing them off of something that other people have done. And you have to fill in. So, what was ever determined? Okay, so I think I think you know, let's let's go back to more help and get about it. Um, so he says they. I know they didn't mention that there was construction demolition hauled off trash. Did we ever determine what that amount was? You can't really determine it. Um, if it's C and D, it just goes into the C and D pile, and it never is calculated into your your municipal solid waste. And that was just a suggestion as to. That, that that was a suggestion to try and explain some of the, the regular numbers that we were getting, but again, we don't know if it was or it wasn't. So those those particularly that thirty one thousand uh, pounds that were generated in June by Mower Hill. Other than we know its location where it was generated was Mar Hill, or that's where it was sent from. We don't know what went into it. We don't necessarily know if it was a miscalculation. It was C and D was factored into it, which I don't think so because that doesn't really. I mean, that would make it way even more if it was C and D. If it was a torn down brick building or something of that sort, and it wouldn't be as close to. I mean, it's still three times more than your typical. Load. Well, it does that does appear out of whack. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me is where, I mean, we, we're starting to get, you, you got the projection, you know, there in September, you got one in January, and, you know, just by looking at that, just it just appears that they're at 2,500 to 3,000 pounds per month. Mm -hmm. So if you go back up there in June and July, and yeah, some of the kids are still going to be living there. Me, if you make that kind of adjustment there, that should get you pretty close. Oh. Which is going to give them pretty good, you know. So, which, what do you want to talk Well, June and July, I mean, if, 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 if what we see after school started, you can see, you know, maybe September. Yeah, and you can buy that out. It's going to be somewhere between 20, you know, probably 26, 2700 pounds a, uh, a month if you prorate it for each month. So you go back up here in June, July. If you reduce them down, that would be that would be what you probably out of whack, and that's probably even a little overestimating because I mean that I think that'd give you a pretty good idea how much demo stuff was put in there. Yeah. In other words, you got 46,000 pounds up there that probably could have come from, and that should be probably more like five to six thousand pounds. So I mean, I guess that's what I'm saying is it, it could be there could be 40,000 pounds overestimation. Well, there it's, it's if you take out that outlier and just average the other ones, they do about eleven thousand pounds. So for them to do thirty-one thousand, I don't know if you. But housing authority board meeting second or second Monday of each month. They said you're poor. Well, that's why. Okay. 
that's what I'm trying to get at is, is how many residentials. How many residential versus total? I think, gosh, I mean, they have is, to be in that too. The, the solid waste committee, the last solid waste meeting, Bill Bannon was ordered out bad. I thought he said 70. Did, did you hear that? 74. Like, like 70 beds. Like somebody, when we were talking about the assessment, so I don't know if so 70 beds translates into 70 kids, but it probably would be too far off the mark. Well, I would think, yeah, I don't know how big that would go into it, but that would be, that would sound, that would sound possible. Because that's what the were talking about, the per bed charge, and somebody asked him how many beds. He said it was easy, it was 70 or so. He, you, you might want to clarify that. It was like 70 something, that's all I remember. Well, the main reason I bring this up is because if we are going to do, we're, we're going to stick with solid waste the assessment fees, it, a lot of these discrepancies do need to get cleaned up. And, yeah, and this there's no doubt in, in, in mind that we're, I mean, but I think to me it's simple. If we just kind of get these, get the basic number of students, you know, basic number of students, just either put a fee on per, per student within, you know, a certain degree, and then in that particular case, count how many beds and then this is per bed sheet. But what, <coughs> we do, what, do do these, what do we do with these? Well, we're going to have to probably, probably you know, obviously have to make, make it a little adjust because I, I think that we way over base that C and D, the contractors got by with murder. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, that's something that we well, sort of have bright charge more hills for that, I'm sure. And yeah. Well, we, we don't, don't, we we don't we know for sure what you need to get called into the future. But, um, yeah, we did over-project by 47%, so whether, then I put in there what, if we just rebated, just did simple math and rebated the 47, but then, yeah, now you get into the issue of, okay, Mar Hill, they were only, they were by far the most over-projected, but then you have, like, MGP of 37. Where do you put the threshold? Do you put a, a limit, I'd say, okay, 20% over, which would be four people, four entities. Then we'll rebate the difference past 20%. So in this case, it would be we rebate 27% back to Mar Hill, 5% uh, back to uh, Bush Mize, 17% back to MB NGP. Oh, I see what you're saying is you, yeah, you have a We get like a 20% fudge factor or a margin of error, which says, you know, if you were off 12%, that's. What do you do with the ones that were 68%? You ask them for money. Those are they aware of what could happen next year? Well, ideally, we would. I, I think unless we committed to doing only a tipping fee, we need to get away from the weights because they're just too inconsistent. We will have anytime you see a zero for an entire month. Well, they generate the trash for a month. Uh, do we make up numbers? Do we average it out? And, and as we go, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're a little ways from it because, I, you know, if you go to the tipping fee, you've got some capital that you've got to lay out. Mm -hmm. But as I visited with Dickinson County, I mean, basically what they do is, I mean, they have a basic, like I forget, it was an $18 or $20 basic, and that's for residential assessment fee. And then you're, somebody comes in hauling their own. Then they pay a tip, in, particularly like these businesses, mm -hmm. then they pay a tipping fee. Right. And so the businesses don't get an assessment, but they will pay on a tipping fee basis. Right. And that's right. how they that's how they basically run theirs. But now they're fully funded through assessment and tipping fee versus supplementing with you know, sales tax. So I mean that's looking down the road, uh, I, I just think to me there's too much doubt that that a fair method, particularly on the businesses who hold their own out there, that, that wouldn't be a possibility. Here again, if we're only talking about you know, 12, 15 big businesses, the scales we got out there could work for the time being. I don't think we have to have a new fancy one per se. And then if you have basic solid wage fee that all residential people and maybe small businesses pay and that's it and, uh, mm -hmm. and then you supplement it with sales tax money mm -hmm. then it simplifies the matter. Um, mm -hmm. it, the, the there's still that incentive out there. The ones 
positive thing about this outside of all the night uh, the, the headaches it's caused you <laughs> and us too, but you know what that is is once there is they become a player in paying for the service, we're seeing we're seeing changes that happen. Mm -hmm. Overnight. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you know, I'm not going to sit here say that uh, that's the only that's the reason you did it. But I mean, it is there is a difference to it. When people you talk to, you, they say, well, you know, you get everybody playing in this game, and you know, they even they got just a little bit of skin, you know. Mm -hmm. You do see changes. They make some changes. Um, and I do like the split fee just because it would be a lot better for anybody that brings their own up because some some transfer stations will have a seven dollar minimum yeah. fee for a truck. Whereas if you pay that one time twenty dollars on your on your um, residence, then you can come up as many times as you want, as long as it's residential and not commercial trash. But then does Mario just they they anybody that's non residential just pays the tipping fee. They they don't get assessed a flat all the way fee, they they just pay it on a month to month basis for well because the tipping fee is uh, it would it would be a month to month thing as opposed to an annual assessment. So we're kind of getting off in the water. Well, right. and let's 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 all wait too many kind of handles on that. Yeah, let's, we try let's give you some direction yeah. as far as what we, we need to do. Oh yeah, yeah. from our help because we were off, and they have a legitimate case in my opinion that we did overcharge no matter which way you measure it. So it's what do we refund them? Can you, can you have this stuff ready okay. for us on Wednesday? So Ace is in Trinity with the calculated like the school districts. So okay. Well, that's okay. I can do that, but I can tell you right now that and that will end up being uh, it won't be cheaper for ACES because you do take into a f the, into account the size and the frequency of the dumpsters that are being picked up. So, you know, a school district of 1,700 kids doesn't dump a dumpster five times a year. That, that just that doesn't happen. But we know for a fact ACES and Trinity have a two cubic yard that they dump twice a week. Now when you start adding a per capita fee on top of that to, to get a volume assessment, that's just going to make it more for Trinity and it's going to make it more for... Well, I'm not saying that. Like, that's what I'm saying. Is, I mean, I, think, I don't think there's that much difference in how schools... You know, the only difference would be you know, 377 that talk to them. They recycle everything that they could recycle. They were not even, they were not even, and they were not really that unhappy with the fee, the original fee. It appears that 409 must be doing something with the same thing because they're pretty close. I mean, they're, they're both in that 90 cents to a dollar range for their students. They were not unhappy with it. They were shocked, to be honest with you. 409. 409 yeah. district, school districts were not unhappy with it. They were very wasn't surprised. Yes. Well, I just. But that's what I'm saying is, is if we can live with that, then let's let's try to make something similar to apply to all of us every school. Just do. I mean, for basic math, just do a dollar capita. Except, if, well, yeah, roughly, yeah, they give us a head count because uh, they got a head count by the 20th of September. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the yeah. private schools do. They're probably, probably pretty similar, I would say. So just put everybody on a headcount for I this year? Yeah, there's only one. one. Well, except, except if you've got residential housing. And there you go. Yeah. And yeah. They're, they're gonna, I, I think that ought to apply then, too. I mean, I, I mean, I think you can't let that off because that is going to generate a lot more trash. Okay. That, that's still not going to be that much. I mean, you know, here again, put on set the fee at, but you know, 70 beds, even if 60 bucks is still $420. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, oh, for $4,200. For $4,200. Yeah, 70 bucks, or 70 beds, 60 bucks. Yeah. And do you treat each dormitory as an individual residence? Well, now how, how is your dorm set up? It's, it's a college dorm, I believe well, it's like a college dorm. Are they private rooms? Are they uh, I think some of them have, they have roommates. Yeah, most, I think most have. Mm. They probably double up and they probably don't have kitchen set up. It's basically a, they have to be a dorm and then they go to the cafeteria. So that also.
I do agree with Jeff that the BC Marco definitely is they're kind of they can be somewhat tied into the same multi residential. Um, if we come up with something that's equitable for that, then they all fit in one category, and that solves a lot of problems. Um, in the meantime, what do we do with the I mean, what what do we send back? Because we did over project. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike was we were talking about the June July wages. Mm -hmm. Because June is three times more. If you eliminate it, then you can go off of a ten thousand. That's that even that skews it even more. I mean Well to me just right now the pattern appears to be in that twenty six to twenty seven hundred pounds a month. Over time, and so if you project that out over 12 months, that's 31,000. I mean, that's almost what the whole June projection was. So that tells me that there's probably could be close to 37,000 pounds. That may be that may be uh, we've over projected by at least 50 percent just based on student. Mm. I mean, I mean uh, because, well, yeah, did it, you know, that would be, you'd have that. Yeah. Of course, that, this, this probably takes into account the residential, too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the house means the so, Well, but see, again, I cannot say with 100% certainty what is the trash comprised of. I don't know if it's C and D type stuff, if it's residential waste, if it's other people's municipal solid waste. Again, because we don't do, you know, random audits where we just stop somebody and go through their trash to know what it is. We don't know what we know you have a lot of projects going on. Today. And we well even I think we signed off on we were the conduit for some of that financing, so we knew if they were doing a project.
if you take that into account, we projected even more than we were supposed to. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
another one, either do a change order and they approve it, or do we do the approval first and then I change it? I mean, even after you set it in hand, do they still appeal it? After everyone, yes. Yeah. Because it was still $3,700 for 200 student school versus $1,500 for a 1,700 person school. Or well, it is out of whack. I mean, it is out of whack. I mean, you have the for June, July compared to the rest of the year. But, is there, there, like I said, they're kind of a red herring because how do you measure them? They don't, they don't do quite the scale of the PC where you can. Okay, so, so I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Do we need to? We so we haven't really addressed their appeal. Apparently, we need to probably need to make that. Make so we probably don't have much more <laughs> hearing so that we it, they can come through and work out what we're thinking and then we'll agree and sign off and stuff. Okay. Okay. So call Phil and let them know. Do we want to get, try and get this done one day? I mean, if this schedule allows. Well, is there any more of these we need? This one is just the worst case. The others, I mean, if we wanted to address the whole, how do you, because um, if somebody did reduce like an MGP, Rackins, they didn't reduce the tonnage, but they significantly reduced the frequency, but they were only about 8% off of what they were projected to do. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's a little bit harder. But the others, you know, Bush Mice, comes to mind because they're 25 percent. We projected them 20 percent, 25 percent over. Now it's clearly due to their reductions. But yeah. Well, okay, but the other thing is, you know, they then they come to you with some records indicating that they didn't agree with your records. Did you make adjustments in addition to the 50 percent? Did you make? You didn't make. Yeah, no, it was it was their their. Theirs was, um, they have two cubic roll offs, well, had two cubic roll offs, and one was a wood container and one was a miscellaneous container. And then once they started branching off, then you know, they will, everyone, every big business will be reassessed next year. We'll, we'll have a better idea of how to appropriately get a number. Well, the more data you collect, I mean, the better, the more accurate this is going to be. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. I hope we will catch up on Bungie a little bit. They may change their habits, too. <laughs> They're very interested. Yeah. And at that point, I don't know if that's a, on their end, or... Well, because, because well, your initial I'm estimation you actually probably yeah. missed two of the biggest months. There's a twenty-five thousand and a thirty-nine thousand. Well, look at them all things that they can't review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I wouldn't know a lot of things. Probably would have been more. Well, the news is the news. Yeah, yeah. 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 don't beat yourself. I mean.
So if our tonnage, if we continue with a 20% decrease, and we're going to be well under 10,000 tons this year, will we? Well, um, my iPad died, but um, April we did 20,000. Our, our invoice was $20,000, which was $4,000 less than our lowest month so far. And that was pretty much due to us going from that $34 a ton to the $30.90. Um, if we can get, and I, um, the person that Deffenbaugh had appointed to be our recycling specialist um, changed jobs, so we Deffenbaugh hasn't supplied us with a new person yet, and that's why the recycling is taking forever. But if we were to incorporate that, because if um, May, June, and July, which are based on a four-year trend, those are your big months. Those are when you have a lot going on. You have stuff moving, stuff being built, everything's going on. If we can stay around 26 for this month and then gradually taper off 2,000 a month, 2000 month after that, we'll only spend two thirds of what we allocated for. So for the for just the um death and boss slash waste management that five hundred five hundred and nine thousand, we probably wouldn't get past the three hundred and twenty thousand mark. And that's if that's that's trying to do a high projection. So no, that's good because you know we were really off quite a bit. Exactly. That's why we it rode off quite a bit, you know, there. And 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 you know, most of the sales tax projections are about sixty thousand I mean based on our best year we're about fifty thousand dollars too long. So I mean we've got you know, we've got probably hundred and seven thousand dollars, hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars that we gotta make up. So uh so do you need any direction on these other things? You, you're, you're, you, know, you recommend it 20%, so anybody else? Uh, I would say that 20% 20, 20 would be a good threshold. Anything over that? Could you bring, what, why don't you bring that and tell us how much dollar it Oh, no, that's, yes. I can, I can get that sent out for you. I don't think I'd have a major problem oh, okay. with that. Yeah. It's going to, you got three or four more of these. This Jeff, other than that, um, these, these are the major differences. That it made. When I came uh -huh. up, they had, I think it was a 20 cubic roll off, is what they needed to meet individually. Um, and that's what, when I came in. Now, I don't know necessarily who picked them, but that's what, when I came in, that's who we were measuring. Okay. And some needed, didn't need to be factored in at all. But, like I said, if we went and go full board for the tipping fee, then, then we start getting good with our weight, weight so if we're not, then we should just go away from them completely.
we'll get a little better percentage on the sales tax because of that form. <laughs> the great thing about this thing is okay. they, they they reward you if you have any more tax. Okay. You might have to send me this. That's no problem. That's fine. Then. I got it on my computer. I'll send it to you. Yeah. No, it, it's based upon he loves population. <laughs> I bet he does. This is pretty nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
wouldn't be have to do it. I'm assuming we'd have to do it by the end of this year or so. That's, uh, that's a screwy thing out of that thing. Take the gun sign down on anybody to get out. Yeah, I thought it was July 1 we have to file that exemption. Well, well, I mean, July 1 is when we, I got the mill over there because too much dirt was us to do. I thought they said they, I thought this was extended that to GM 1 to file that for your extension. I'll look and see what the bill's over there. I mean, I have to say. They had they both Melissa Weinman on the phone the other day. I, I thought she said they extended it to like GM 1 or something. Wednesday, because she was talking about. Is she, she at your meeting on Wednesday? Did you like that hotel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't sleep there too bad. <laughs> I remember that. They, they had a thing on the bed mattress where you make it softer or higher. They were talking about it. Well, sleep by number? Did you get to sleep by number? I just like to get it. You mean oh, all the beds are like that? Really? I didn't yes. finish.